Okay, guaranteed this is happening a lot lately right now, where you've got that client that comes to you with a, well, let's just call it a shoestring budget. And it, I mean, they might have a good budget, but in today's market, well, we all know prices are ridiculous right now. So they come to you with this budget that's maybe not high enough, and they, but they've got all these big expectations of what they want. They're telling you, oh, I want this many bedrooms, and I want to have, you know, I want to be facing this direction, and I don't want that. And, you know, they've got this long wish list of everything they want, but we know what's going on in this market right now and it doesn't really work like that, right? So this is all about creating realistic client expectations so that we know how to tell people what's going on, what's you know what's gonna happen out there and what they should be expecting, okay? So the number one, and there's a three-step process here that I'm gonna give to you right now. Number one, when you're dealing with a client, who is in a place where they've got unrealistic expectations, the first thing you wanna do, you wanna dig for the need. So when you're speaking with them, you wanna ask them a lot of open-ended questions. Why do you feel that way? What do you want more of that? How would that make you feel? Instead of these yes or no answers, you're looking for them to really spill the beans, okay? So a lot of what's and when's and how's and where's. Those are your questions. Again, open-ended questions. Get them talking, telling you more. Once you can dig for the need and you know exactly what they need, you're also gonna learn a lot about, well, well, what they want, right? Now that you know what they need, you know what they want, now we can go out there and help them find it. Well, here comes the second part of this. This is all about education and communication. You see, you've got to educate them on what's going on out there with the market, right? In order for them to have the right expectations, for us to set the stage the right way, we got to really share what is happening out there in the marketplace right now. Buyers are, um, you know, being priced out of most markets right now, they're offering on houses, they're getting to be an outbid, there's a lot of multiple offer situations. People are emotionally buying a house before they've actually bought the house. And then, well, again, there's a lot of disappointment setting in. So again, we want to create those client expectations. We want to create realistic expectations. Remember something, you may get frustrated going, I can't believe they want all this stuff. I can't believe they think this is realistic. But they know, or they don't know what you know. They know what they know, and they know what they want. Again, they don't know what you know, but they know what they know, and they know what they want. So those are the expectations we're dealing with. So here it comes the third thing now. The third one is a client expectation sheet. And I encourage you to put one of these together for your listing package, your pre-list, or not even listing, pardon me, your buyer package. When you're dealing with a buyer, I encourage you to put this together. You know what? Buyers and sellers. That's really where I'm going with this thing. Realistic expectations. It doesn't matter if they're on the buying side or the selling side. The point is this client expectation sheet, what it does is it outlines everything you guys talked about. So everything you've told them about the market, everything you've told them about what to expect on either the buying or selling side, everything is on this sheet. Consider this kind of like your, uh, your Coles notes. Now, why do we have this? Well, as we're doing things together and as we're progressing along and maybe the house isn't selling as fast as we thought it would, maybe we didn't get as many offers as we thought we would. Um, maybe the buyer keeps losing out on a whole bunch of properties and they're getting frustrated and well, they start to sort of place blame on you, point the finger at you. But what you wanna be able to do in this moment right now, you wanna save the relationship. Remember, there's a lot of opportunity after this for repeat and referral business. So we wanna save the relationship. We want the social proof out of this one after the fact. So what can we do to make sure that they're, well, they're always smiling, that even when they're getting frustrated, we're the ones keeping them positive, we're the ones keeping them, you know, their spirits high. We're the ones reminding them, hey, remember, we talked about this, this is the way it's going. Well, this is the moment, and this is again, when we're talking days, weeks, Maybe a month later, when they're a little bit frustrated, they're starting to get really tired of everything. You go, hey, remember that sheet I gave you? I want you to go reference that. Now, the way you tell them to reference it, that's gonna be in your own lingo, your own verbs, your own ways to say it, whatever you wanna do there in order to tell them to go look it up. But the bottom line is you're like, hey, I told you this before, right? Look, this client expectation sheet, this is your way of saying, I told you so, without having to say, I told you so, right? So again, when they're frustrated and they're having this conversation with you and maybe you see that they're pointing blame at you, you do wanna seriously reference this sheet, have them look it over and go, look, we talked about this stuff. This is exactly what we were expecting to happen. It's all good, we're gonna keep pushing through. Again, this is how you manage unrealistic client expectations. They may think it's realistic. You may know it's not. The bottom line is we have to manage the client. When we manage the client, everything else goes smoother. And again, not only does this transaction go well, but we set ourselves up for more down the road. That is you building positive mindshare.